Salutations. Uh, my name is Phil Willis, aka JC Servant. Uh, welcome to just a just a little chit chat. We'll call this a little chit chat, and uh, and this is going to be one of my theology heavy videos. So if you're offended by theology, it's not your cup of tea. You can definitely feel free to skip on some of this uh, or all of it. Uh, some of my videos I make are about video games. Some of my video games are about theology. Every once in a while I do something outside the box, just as the mood strikes me or whatnot. Uh, but yes, I mostly have a few, two main hobbies, three maybe, but uh, I'm mostly revolving around uh, gaming and theology for the most part, uh, outside of my, my paying job and taking care of the house and all the other adulting that has to be done. So... Today I want to talk about this this video uh, from Stargate SG-1. I was talking with a friend, and she, I believe, said she was either agnostic or atheist, uh, but definitely did not believe in the Christian ideal of a god. And she said, Phil, I could try to explain to you why I believe what I believe, but this video does it so much better. And this video is from a show called Stargate SG-1. It was out in the 90s. Uh, I was a fan of it. I watched a lot of the episodes with my wife uh, in the early 2000s. And uh, it definitely follows the pattern of a lot of science fiction shows of, those, uh, of that era, which is to say they were very well written, but they also told a very uh, progressive, anti christian -y type of story um, and whatnot. One of my teachers, when it came to story writing, mentioned that every story tries to prove an argument. Uh, the Wizard of Oz tries to prove that there's no place like home, right? Uh, the uh, Star Wars teaches you to believe in the Force. A lot of the science fiction shows like Star Trek and Stargate SG-1 were basically trying to argue for uh, you know, a humanistic message uh, that mankind will eventually work his way out of his own problems. Well, that's particularly true with Star Trek more than anything else. Stargate SG-1, maybe not as much. But the one thing they do definitely have in common is that they are, they were very uh, much focused on, uh, when it came to these words about religion, it was, it was definitely uh, uh, almost always presented that what people perceived as gods and angels and stuff were really just aliens, really just aliens. So you don't need to believe in God. So a lot of the, the characters in these shows really don't, don't believe in God, if not all of them. I don't think there's a, a single character in Star Trek that believes in the Christian ideal of God out of all of the shows and all the books that I've read or anything along those lines. Because, of course, such things would be madness and silliness in, in the future. Regardless, I'm going to talk about this particular seen today from Stargate uh, SG-1. I'm going to go through it and I'm going to pause it and interject my comments because I watched this once after she sent me the video and I had so many different thoughts. I could have written them all down, made this kind of edited, but I said, I put all my stuff on the back of her. I said, let me just do kind of like a reaction video and just put, just play it, pause it and, and just bring up some thoughts. This is how uh, I think a uh, somebody you know who who believes in Christianity might answer some of the concerns that are brought up in this show, but this show does what quite a few shows did at the time, and and tries to present an anti-Christian message, and this actually plans the seeds for what we pretty much have today. Here we are, in the year 2024. This came out at least 25 years ago, I want to say, and. And really, where we're at today as a nation, this is what was planting the seeds. We are now in a very anti-theistic nation where we don't want to believe in God. We want to go our own way. You talk to people on the street and their morality is all over the place as each one makes up what's right and wrong to themselves because we no longer look to an objective standard of truth like the Bible or God's word in order to determine what is right and what is wrong. So... But with that being said, let's let's go ahead and get the video started. And I'll have some some thoughts as we go through, and then thoughts at the end. And as you can see, uh, when we're starting, we're already kind of starting off with what some people might, you know, envision in their mind is kind of like a heavenly place. Now, 
this character that's walking in right here, this is Daniel Jackson. In Stargate SG-1, there was a quartet of military uh, personnel, well, two military. One uh, one, one was also kind of an, an alien that it was almost like a warrior that joined them as well. And then Daniel Jackson here, who is essentially the scientist, the professor, the smart one, um, of the group and the such. Uh, he had quite a bit of character development over the shows that I watch. I never did make it all the way to season nine here, so I never saw this episode before, but I definitely recognize the character. And he's gonna be essentially your your voice of reason here in the argument that's about to come up. And and the, the arguments he makes when I talk to atheists today are gonna be a, a lot of the arguments that I hear from them. Those are... There's going to be this guy right here. He's kind of like a, a, going to represent the angels or the gods or whatever. And uh, he has taken on the form of one of the other main characters. Uh, it's not important, but he'll make mention of it. it. It isn't really the main character. It's just an angel taking on that appearance or an otherworldly being or whatever you want to call it. Leave us. Daniel Jackson. Right. From the planet Earth. Okay. So you know my name and where I'm from, so I assume you also know how I'm connected to this man's mind. Why I'm here. Uh, you see, we're, we're explorers. We'd very much like to get to know you, um, your, your society, how you came to be. A prior has been dispatched. So... Uh, this is kind of also a lot of times what you see in Star Trek and whatever. Uh, so Taylor Jackson representing the humans, interfacing with the aliens that, like I said, are kind of a stand for God and Christianity and stuff like that as we're going to see. Kai kind of presumes himself like, hey, we're kind of innocent. We're just explorers. We have a little mind. We're here to discover more about what you're about. We're willing to, 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 to listen. Uh, and whatnot. Of course, most people today really are very closed-minded and don't really want to listen. Don't come with open hands and open minds uh, about that. But, but regardless, that's that's the, the the picture that he's presenting here. Batch to the place from whence you come. Really? Uh, you can you can do that. I, I thought we were in another galaxy. It is the will of the Aura. So. This guy, I kind of cut in the middle here, so I'll reiterate. This guy just basically said, hey, we sent, we dispatched our, more of our people, whatever it may be, to your planet. And Daniel Johnson's like, we're a whole universe, galaxy away, whatever. And he's like, hey, this isn't beyond us. So are we kind of laying down the figure, uh, the, more of the groundwork that these guys are, representative deities and angels and the such. We, we have all these almighty powers that are way above mankind and all this other jazz. Plus the iconography, the, the setting, everything kind of looks like the, the gates of heaven and everything else back there. That we should spread origin to all those blessed by their creation. Okay, well, uh, I think you should understand that there are, are many different kinds of people in the place from whence I come. Um, people who believe in, in many different things. Okay, so, he, he, you know, this angel said, hey, we've kind of sent people to the earth. We're going to spread our version of the word. And I'm just like, you see that look in his face, there's a bit of a concern. Wait a minute, when they get there, there's people who believe all kinds of things. And he already is figuring out that, uh, that they're beliefs aren't going to be compatible because people believe all you know all, all kinds of things and whatever have you and this is going to be a, a huge problem they shall find the path to enlightenment right well I, I think you should also understand that they may not see your way as the only way the power and the greatness of the aura cannot be denied so we're already starting to put together that 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 christian um argument and counter argument so christianity teaches that jesus is the only way to god uh, jesus said i'm the, the, no man comes to the father but by me i'm the way the truth and the life no man comes to the father but by me there is no other way to god you can't get it through uh, islam or buddhism or atheism or anything like that the only way to enter into heaven as a christian message is through jesus christ his son that he gave on the cross so um 
so this guy is saying, but hey, but we're the enlightened. We have the right message. People will believe this. We're, we're, you know, this is the only way or there's going to be destruction. And this is obviously something he's going to argue, uh, uh, be, be very concerned and argue against. Those who reject the path to enlightenment must be destroyed. Kind of, again, that Kirshia message, of course, you know, with Christianity, if you don't believe in Christ, you go to hell. Um, and this is obviously going to be a huge problem from Daniel Jackson here. Now, the thing about that whole Christian message is people pretty much decide whether they want to be with God and he resides in heaven and in heaven, the angels and everything glorify God. You, you become, uh, when you die and you go to be with God, you do so to go and glorify him for all of eternity, for all of, the, uh, for all of his goodness and his holiness and what he's done for you and all this other stuff. The people who decide they don't want any part of that, they, they go to hell. C.S. Lewis said that the gates from hell are locked within. It isn't that God forces them there. They pretty much run there and close the door, so to speak, is, is, is definitely a big part of that message. Um, but here, these angels are going to earth. They're, they're going to you know teach this message. If you don't like it, they're going to be burned and destroyed. And obviously, Daniel Jackson's going to have a problem with this. I was afraid of that. The Book of Origin says, those who seek the path to enlightenment must not be led astray. We're referencing a written book, the Book of Enlightenment, kind of referencing the Bible. There's definitely an analogy there. Right. You see, that can be interpreted a number of different ways. Another big atheist argument, hey, you've got this Bible, but it can be interpreted a number of different ways, and that's why there's all these denominations. So if you Christians can't agree, why should we believe you? Plus, maybe we just interpret a different way than you. Um, when it comes to the essential doctrines of Christianity, that man has sinned, he's fallen, and the wages of sin are death, uh, these, uh, and that Jesus Christ his God's only begotten son died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. None of that is in dispute, right? When, you know, when you go to different churches, different Christian churches, that's the core message they all agree on. What they tend to splinter and disagree about are a lot of the smaller matters, like whether or not you should baptize children or whether or not women should wear dresses or pants in church or whether or not you should have rock and roll music versus the organ music, things like that. But these are things that when you're, really into theology you're willing to debate for hours on end. i like to debate so i can see where they're coming from and they'll debate for hours on end and sometimes that will get passionate and people will divide over it this was a problem the bible doesn't shy away from this problem this is actually mentioned numerous times in the the new testament this is going to happen and the bible essentially tells you that when it comes to these smaller doctrines uh, we shouldn't divide about uh, over it we're just going to end up doing it at times but but when it comes to the essential doctrines, that is something that if someone doesn't understand or, or is pushing a different gospel message, that would be something you would definitely divide over uh, and whatnot. But regardless, getting back to this guy, that's the, oh, hey, you guys can't, you guys can't, no, no, that, that work can be interpreted different ways. It really, really can. Um, no, no. Uh, one analogy I'd like to use is states and countries. When you drive within the United States, there's 50 different states and they have some slightly different rules. Uh, you know, like one state will say you can take a right hand turn on a red light. The other state says you can't. Uh, some states have income tax, some don't. But generally speaking, they all have the big rules are pretty similar between all of the countries. You have the right to free speech, for example. The big, huge rules are, are there across the board. But when you go outside the country, and I've been to Indonesia, for example, you don't have freedom of speech. You, oh, yeah, they don't even drive on the same side of the road. So it's completely different, a different country. So the denominations, uh, Christian denominations are like different states. But then when you go to something like Islam or one of these other big religion, uh, different religions, that's where you're going to a different country. I think maybe I know what the Ori are, uh, who they are. Um, and I'm not denying they are very powerful beings, but if I'm right, they're not gods. They're like the ascended beings I know. They simply have a greater understanding of the knowledge of the universe. What is so this is something that you definitely hear a lot from some people, that even if there was a god, uh, in fact, there's some religions that teach this, 
uh, Mormonism being a key among them, that the gods are just essentially evolved uh, uh, types of humans or more enlightened humans. And this kind of feeds an argument that after all, at the end of the day, science figures everything out, explains everything, and 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 we're going to figure all this out at the end of the day, and that takes away from the the miracle of miracles, so to speak. That's a whole other conversation, but but something that I've heard of before. Uh, but God is transcendent uh, above all of that. He is above time and space. He is omnipotent, omniscient, and all that other jazz by by definition. So it doesn't even fit into the. He would be way above these these aliens, no matter how smart and how capable they are in this story. There is a god, but a being that is worshipped by those beneath. His great knowledge, power, understanding, not enough for you to revere the Ori. Um, so he's making this argument, it's almost a straw man argument that, hey, so we've got this great power, this great knowledge, this big understanding, therefore you should worship us. Of course, Daniel Jackson is going to counter that, but I would point out that God is much more than just simply that. He, and, and the Ori, I think, are also, it was implied a little bit earlier, they were the creators, um, or that they had a, pl a role in planting the seeds for mankind on earth or whatever the deal may be. God is the one true creator of not just mankind, the entire universe. So his authority lies partly in the fact that he is the creator, but he's also the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And he's also the true, by definition, the true moral, ethical standard. He is the source of all goodness. He is goodness. He is love. He is also holiness. He is all of those things. And these reasons and so much more are why he is worthy of worship. He demonstrates that holiness through his his laws and his the Ten Commandments, the, the the things that Jesus taught us, he demonstrates that holiness when he demonstrates how he executes justice uh, by judging people. But he's also love, and he demonstrates his love uh, in how he has created all this wonderful stuff for us, in the miracles of life that we see every day, um, the blessings that we have in the world around us, and of course, the death and resurrection of his son, who he sent to die in our place. So we have all these demonstrations of all of these reasons of why we worship God uh, in history and in our daily life that have, uh, you know, very only superficially um, correspond with some of the arguments being made here on the surface level. And this is enough for most people to buy into this and use this as a stand-in for God. But honestly, there's there's a lot of fundamental differences between this fictional race and the, the, the Christian God of the Bible. To me, this argument just falls apart. Respect, yes, certainly, but that doesn't mean I would murder innocent people in their name. This is another uh, uh, Christian anti-Christian argument. In the Bible, there's at least one, if not maybe a couple of instances where God is commanding the Israelites to go and kill another, you know, grouping of people, the Canaanites. He's clearing out the land for the Israelites to take over. And and so atheists will point to this group of, of uh, to these group of passages and say, hey, God tells them to go and kill these innocent people. And that's that's completely wrong. They're innocent people. And, 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 and I'll never follow a God that that demands that I go and kill innocent people. So there's a couple of problems with this argument. First off, let's talk about, you know, we talk about God. God created all of us and and we sinned against God. Every single one of us has sinned hundreds, if not thousands of times against God, knowing full well what we are doing is wrong. We lie, we steal, we cheat, we uh, do things out of anger, which are akin to murder in God's eyes because his standards of holiness are so much higher than ours. We insult him over and over again. And, you know, a lot of my atheist friends are waving their fists in the air at him, right? We've created, uh, we've definitely are anything but innocent and the wages of sin are death. So we're all going to die. We're all going to pay the physical price for our sins, which is physical death. Uh, this is something that's going to happen to every single one of us. If God takes of us sooner rather than later, that's his prerogative, a hundred, a hundred percent. Furthermore, it, what, what about innocent children? They're so innocent. Uh, again, no one's really innocent. Uh, you know, you can definitely argue whether or not children are innocent, but, but 
let's for sake of argument assume that these children are completely innocent and i've seen what two-year-olds can do they're they're little devils but assuming they're innocent for a minute if god could look at the future of time which he can't he can see past present and future and and he knows that it, a life with him in heaven is so much better than anything we have on earth and he decides to end someone's life early so they can be with him let's say for sake of argument in heaven earlier because these are innocent people and innocent people won't go to hell they will be in heaven with him then who are we to say that he can't do that earlier rather than later and that person once they realize the full scope once they can see heaven they're gonna be like i'm glad i got to go up here early and didn't have to live 40 50 70 years on a miserable planet filled with disease and strife and heat and cold and suffering and pain and sin and everything else there's this one song by carmen where this guy uh, is is dying he's in a hospital he breathes his last he goes up to heaven and his family is down on earth praying for him and this man goes and, and faces uh, the angels or whoever it is and they said hey you know you've served god well you put your faith in jesus christ uh you know we're ready to let you into heaven but your family's praying for you because of their faithfulness they really want you back and we're willing to grant the request and send you back to earth and he's like they would know if they only got a glimpse of the glory I've seen here, if they've only could see a moment of what I've seen, they would never ask that I go back for you are the, the light. You are the one true God. You are the one who is uh, worthy of praise. The song is very passionate. Go check it out. I uh, uh, forget the exact name of it. But the whole point is, I think it's called Third Heaven, but the whole point is heaven's glory is so much better than anything we have here on earth. So compared to earth you know compared to heaven earth is pretty much hell so if someone gets taken to heaven early like innocent children would go to heaven because god is a just judge if if they're innocent they will go to heaven then th th that that's probably good for them but of course if you're atheistic you don't see any of this you're just you're so short viewed because you're like oh if something dies if somebody kills somebody else or god kills somebody it's the worst thing on earth it's his prerogative and he's the one person who's allowed to do it because he's the one person who if they're innocent he can make sure that they are put into a much much better place you know as a result he's the one person who's qualified to do that that's why none of us should be murdering other people um you know because uh, in cold blood without his direction or anything like that because we can't we can't we can't see where they would go so we're not the judges so there is more about this any of these arguments by the way you can just look on youtube there's there's christian apologists who make these uh, arguments with a lot more eloquence than i do i guess what i'm trying to understand is whether the or i have spoken to you directly and told you to worship them or whether you've misinterpreted some evidence you found along the way and developed this religion on your own another another kind of common argument is hey that that religion you have today you're, you're just making a lot of it up it's not even really what's taught in the bible things like that kind of went over that a little bit earlier uh, but again when it comes to the basics of christianity uh, and worshiping god it's pretty well spelled out there's there's, there's not um, any really true different ways to misunderstand the bible it's so simple the gospel message is so simple a, a child could understand it i'm pretty sure i have a video with three up on it in my archives i can certainly do another one but the gospel message is very simple to understand i can't speak for everyone in my galaxy but in my own humble opinion i don't believe that any individual or society can achieve enlightenment through fear-mongering and forced servitude no matter what power is presented as evidence so definitely another argument i won't believe in god because the bible teaches a lot of fear tries to use fear to coerce person to believe in him there's plenty of messages about hell in fact jesus spoke more about hell than anything uh in, than he did about heaven uh and, and whatever have you so if how do i put this if if you're sick and you've got cancer uh and and satan you know or satan i'm sorry a doctor is talking to you and he's got a pill that can get rid of this cancer and you're like oh, you know i i don't really like this pill i don't like taking pills don't you have anything else and the doctor's like i'm telling you we just came with this pill we've tested it it's good to go this will cure your cancer but it's the only solution we have for cancer you really need to take the pill 
uh, I don't know. I don't really want to take a, that seems so intolerant. Uh, what if I believe that, you know, that taking a walk, what, I think if I believe hard enough, that should, and the doctor's like, look, you don't understand. This is the only thing that will work. Uh, I'll be fine. You know what? I, I don't need, I, I'll be okay. It's just, be okay, I'll be fine. You understand that cancer is going to kill you. Now, is the doctor fear mongering or is he telling you the truth and the reality of your situation when he explains the consequences of you not taking this pill is going to be, you know, a descent into death um, and whatnot. The Bible uh, definitely teaches about consequences to our actions and hell and eternal death is a consequence to sin. So in that respect, there is, you can call it fear mongering. You can call it preaching the truth. You can, you can call it whatever you want. Um, but it is what it is. It also uses love and kindness. God demonstrated the gravity of this situation, not simply through the illustration of hell and eternal damnation, but he also demonstrated how serious the situation was with a loving response by sending his son to suffer and die on the cross in a most brutal fashion. So this was a demonstration of how serious sin was, but doing it in a way that had nothing to do with fear mongering, but was done through a demonstration of pure love, pure kindness. So God doesn't just use, you know, this darker, if you want to call it that, this darker fear mongering slash just telling you about the consequences, whatever you, however you want to label this, but he doesn't just use this approach. He also uses love and love's response had to be in proportion to how serious the situation was, you know? And so if you just insult your wife a little bit, you bring her some flowers or something like that. This, this was such a big deal that his son had to die on the cross for us. So. And that's something the ascended beings I know very clearly seem to understand. Don't get me wrong, I mean, we should all be trying to better ourselves. I mean, if, if ascension really is the ultimate end we're trying to achieve, then so be it. But we should all be allowed to get there or not of our own free will. So a couple of things here already. He's like, hey, if ascension is the primary concern, elevation, enlightenment, which a lot of fake religions out there teach that. A lot of people believe that. As long as I'm just trying to be a better person, that's what's really important. That's what makes me a good person. And, and any god would understand that and let me into heaven. That's just simply not even close to the truth. Enlightenment is not the goal at all. It may be a natural byproduct as you study God's word, you become more enlightened about spiritual truth and all that other jazz, but that's not the end goal in and of it itself. The point is you're a sinner. You've sinned. You deserve death. You're guilty. You have a debt that you cannot pay. Jesus Christ died on the cross so that you could have um, that paid in your stead. But you've got to put your faith and trust in him. You've got to lay your life at his feet. you got to walk away from your life of sin and say, I'm going to follow his direction because if you're going to keep doing what you want to do, then his death was for nothing. If you're going to continue to sin, hurt other people, hurt yourself, hurt God, then his death would be, would be in vain at that point. It doesn't serve any purpose. You're going to continue to go into there. So you need to follow him. Um, but it's about the forgiveness of your sins, not so that you can become enlightened. You can kill me for saying that, but that is what I believe in. Nothing you say or do will ever change my mind. Again, very, very much echoing the vast majority of atheists I, I've, I've seen. They make this argument, then they shut it down by saying, no matter how you respond to this, no matter what evidence you give to me at this, I don't care, even if you kill me, even if you destroy my soul, my spirit, whatever, my mind is made up. So as I said, the gates from hell are locked from within. They're, you know, if I, if I, if I ask one of these atheists, what if I could show you this was true? What if I can, what if I could show you convincing evidence and convincing arguments that this, this Christianity was true? Wouldn't that be very important just in case, you know, just to, you know, make sure your soul is going in the right direction. And the response is, I don't want to hear it, Phil, because I've, my mind is already made up. I've already reasoned this out the way Daniel Jackson here is. And no matter how false my arguments, you know, because, uh, I, I don't, I don't care. I'd rather die. And if that's a spiritual death, then I'll worry about that when I get there. But that's what I'd rather do. And again, the gates from hell are locked within. People raise their fists in the air of God and say, you know what? I, I've got this superficial understanding of, of of the Bible. You kill innocent people. You you rule with an iron fist. You demand this from people. I want no part of it. And no matter what you say, I can't have my mind changed. 
I just put my fist in the ground or fist in the air and say, I, I, you know, I don't want it. Again, God says, if that's what you want, see, God loves us so much. He says, that's what you want. You can have it. You can have life separate from me. It's a place called hell. It's a place devoid of my blessings, devoid of light, devoid of warmth, devoid, uh, you know, devoid, devoid of love, devoid of kindness, uh, devoid of all of that stuff that you take for granted on earth. Because all of this is because of his blessing. So you, you want, you want, you, you got it. God gives us what we want. Come. Gotta love these 90 special effects. Just <laughs> they make today's modern CGI look really good by comparison. We do not require blind faith. Only that you believe what you see and know to be true. We are Ori. And you instruct these people to worship you. We are their creators. All who follow the path will join us in enlightenment. Do you know who the Alterans are? Those who abandon the path are evil. Okay. So, um, so there you go. You kind of have it there at the end there. And they're like, hey, you know, everyone needs to kind of follow us or kind of reiterates kind of the, uh, what they've already kind of said. Um, Hey, we don't require blind faith, but once they see it, they, they're either on board or else. And again, kind of echoing that, that Christian message. So Christian message, I would tell you the same thing. Uh, Christianity faith is not a, a completely blind faith or anything along those lines. Um, faith does not mean you just completely go in uneducated and you haven't done any study. In fact, a lot of scientists have become Christians after doing a bunch of study. A lot of atheists have become Christians after doing a lot of research to try to prove the Bible wrong or prove God's word wrong, and they find out and instead it's just the opposite. So uh, it's the same thing uh, with, with Christianity. Uh, I'll give you a good example of what faith looks like. So uh, I've been with my wife for many, many years. I have faith that she loves me and that she's faithful to me. I put my faith into her. At any point in time, she could betray my faith. She could take our bank account, you know, money, run of her, run away, do all kinds of weird stuff, right? But I have my faith in her. Now, that faith is not a blind faith, right? That comes from, we've been together for a very long time. We've known each other for a very long time. So it's based on all of these years of being together. But I have no way of knowing for a fact what the future holds. My knowledge is limited. She could change her mind at any time. There's stories about this happening all of the time. But my faith in her is based on behavior up to this point. So it's not a blind faith at all. Now, when we first met many, many years ago, if I said, hey, oh, uh, what's your name? Oh, okay. Um, you seem like a really nice lady. Here's my social security number, my bank account number. I give you, I, I trust you completely. That, you know, on day one, that would be a blind, a completely uh, blind faith and whatever have you. So Christianity does not ask for this completely blind faith either. Uh, you, you, you're supposed to be, in fact, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. Uh, the, the, the Christianity is a, is a religion about reading and knowing God and understanding theology. Uh, there's plenty of Bible verses that talk about this. And there's a reason why we have biblical scholars, we have biblical colleges, uh, and whatever have you. And a lot of Christians have become scientists. Some of the best uh, scientists that have given us many of the modern inventions that we have today were Christian. Christianity and science goes like this. It is a religion of study and learning and everything like that. So uh, this is this is true of Christianity as well. So in the end, there uh, definitely the the angel there is kind of giving you a Christian argument. Hey, we don't require blind faith, but uh, you know you, you do need to study and, and look at this and 
you're either going to choose God or, or you're going to face destruction. So it's kind of reiterating that, that same argument. But um, overall, a very, very interesting clip. And again, I think it encapsulates a lot of the arguments that we see from atheist uh, today. And I think I've touched on a lot of those points kind of briefly here, went through a lot of material really quick. Any one of these particular subject matters, you can dive, uh, you can easily do a search on YouTube and, and, the, and the internet and find much better well thought out and written Christian arguments to like the problem of the killing of the Canaanites or anything along those lines and find those detailed out in further um, detail. Uh, if you want something that's a little bit better written and thought out. This is just me shooting from the hip. If you want to talk about any of this stuff, I always welcome it. You can always use the comments below. Uh, you can join me on Discord. I'm JC Servant on Discord, J-C-S-E-R-V-A-N-T. You are welcome to come and look me up, and I'll do a, a voice chat with you. We can do text, whatever. We can talk about some of this. Shoot me up an email, jcservant316 at gmail. Happy to chat about any of this stuff for anybody who's got further questions, is seeking anything. I'm always uh, happy to try and help. But I, I hope this video helps some people out, maybe help you to understand if you are a Christian, how to answer some of these questions, or if you are truly searching, maybe give you some more things to think upon and invite you to read the Bible more, to get your answers from God's word. And if you need somebody to bounce some ideas off or some thoughts off of or hard questions off of uh, from a Christian perspective, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. That, that door is open as long as the Lord is willing. Um, I'm happy to be here and happy to help. But thank you all very much, and I'll see you again next time.